Welcome back to the Sports News Analysis YouTube channel, where I'm always breaking down the hot sports topics of the day. My name is Mike. You know, the Browns made a move today to bring in Jason Campbell as sort of a serviceable veteran backup quarterback to Brandon Whedon. They're going to give Brandon Whedon every opportunity to win the job this year and be the starting quarterback of the Browns. Um, which is I, what I think they should do. they got to see what they have in Brandon Whedon. I'm not high on Brandon Whedon. I think in the end, Rob Chudzinski and Joe Banner are not high on Brandon Whedon. I just think they're going to give him a chance because, let's face it, although the Browns have a pretty high draft pick, there's no, in my mind, quarterback in this draft that's a surefire franchise quarterback that you can slot in and take and start from day one here. So I think what you're going to see Chudzinski and Banner do is give Whedon the year uh, to prove himself. If he falters, you have Campbell waiting in the wings to hold the fourth down this season. And I think what the Browns should do is really target in on next year's draft, drafting uh, one of the quarterbacks that will be available because it's thought to be a very a lot better quarterback draft next season. I'll get into some of the names I think uh, that could be available for the Browns. But you know, I think the Browns, again, next year will have a top 10 pick. Why do I say that? Uh, I think the Browns do have a lot of potential on defense. But look, when you don't um, have a quarterback, it's very tough to win in a division where you have the Ravens, who are coming off winning the Super Bowl, obviously. You have the Bengals, who have now made the playoffs two years in a row and have a good young nucleus. And you have the Steelers coming off a year where they didn't make the playoffs. Um, so you would tell you'd be either expecting me to to think the Ravens are going to fall off the map, the Bengals are going to stop improving as a young team who's made the playoffs two years in a row, and we'd have to also bank on the fact that the Steelers would have two subpar seasons in a row. And that's a lot to go wrong for those other three teams to even make the Browns competitive in that division. So I see at the very ceiling for the Browns, them going 7-9. and nine. That's best case everything goes their way. I think it's more likely they're in that top 10 pick range, maybe even top 6 or 7 picks again. And I think there'll be, there'll be four quarterbacks, at least initially, um, that they could have their eye on for next year. Four quarterbacks I think are better options than anyone available in the draft this year. Let's throw out some names for you. First of all, Teddy Bridgewater from the University of Louisville. This guy, you know, scouts rave about him. They rave about his potential. You probably saw him this past year towards the end of the year really come on. Teddy Bridgewater, Johnny Manziel has thought there's a strong possibility he could come out after this year too. David Fales from San Jose State. He had a great season last year. He'll really, I think, emerge on the national stage this year for a, you know, a, a team that has gained some notoriety um, out there in the WAC, but you know, not a team that's a household name by any means. So David Fales from San Jose State. You're gonna have Taj Boyd from Clemson. So there's gonna be guys on the board here, um, you know, that I think would fit what Rob Chudzinski wants to do more from a scheme perspective, and be a huge talent upgrade over certainly Brandon Whedon. I don't think Brandon Wheaton's a bad guy. I just think when you think of Brandon Wheaton eventually, he's, again, going to be a serviceable, pretty good backup quarterback in the NFL, not an elite franchise-type player. And, you know, the fact of the matter is you can keep on it. The way the salary cap is now under the new collective bargaining agreement, you can keep on guessing on quarterbacks every two or three years or so. You know, Wheaton doesn't prove himself this year. Okay, who's the next guy? Because it's not cost prohibitive. And, you know, to build all these other aspects of your team up and not have a quarterback, you're just going to be spinning your wheels, especially in a competitive division like the Browns are in. So, again, we will probably get the opportunity to start this year, but I think the long-term answer for the Cleveland Browns at quarterback is someone coming out in the 2014 NFL Draft, and it could very well be those four names I threw out there. Taj Boyd, Johnny Manziel, Teddy Bridgewater, or David Fails. Let me know what you guys think of my sort of synopsis of the Cleveland Browns quarterback situation. Hit me up in the YouTube comments. Hit me up on Twitter at S News Analysis. I just think exercising a little bit of patience here for the Browns. And I know I'm asking their fans to be patient. And they've waited a long time for a winner, but I think there's a gem for them in a quarterback class of 2014. So be sure to subscribe to my channel here, guys. I upload between 5 10 sports talk videos a day, all about sports. Thanks again for listening, and have a great night.